Microphones are hot, and we are back. Welcome back into your rock and wrestling radio show. Welcome back into Beyond Ringside, live from Birmingham, Alabama. Yours truly, the Magic City Motor Mouth, Fast Eddie Lane. Joined by the super pimp, Mr. MCO. What's happening, y'all? And also wearing a sparkly thong, it's Mabo. Welcome and back. we're pipping. Amen. 205-316-9900, the number to get in touch with us here on the Ringside Roundtable. And we do have a very special guest coming on board. You got it. You got. You want him? You got him. And he is part of the Legends Mania Convention coming up this weekend, March 12 and 13, in Atlanta, Georgia. Legendary professional wrestling manager, Percy Pringle, Paul Bearer, D, all of the above. Welcome to Beyond Ringside, sir. Beyond ringside, I'm this tickled to death. How you guys doing tonight? Wonderfully well, wonderfully well. Now, which name would you prefer to be called right now? You can call me anything you want. <laughs> on time for dinner. Glad to have you on board. Well, I ain't never got to worry about being on time to eat. But call me what you want to. <laughs> Mr. Pringle, always a pleasure, sir. It's it's great honor to have you on board with us this week. First off, once again, Friday, Saturday, March 12th, March 13th, you're going to be one of the featured guests at Legends Mania, the tag team convention in Atlanta, Georgia, at the Sheridan Gateway Hotel. People can find out a little bit more about the uh, convention itself at legendsmedia.com. Of course, the website address. You can find them also on Facebook and I believe on Twitter as well. Uh, now, this is going to be an interesting circumstance for a storyline that you were involved in because also another one of the featured guests who's going to be a part of the convention is the man, one of the men who has successfully stolen the Undertaker's urn while you were part of WWE. And of course, that would be Mr. Hughes or Curtis Hughes. Yeah, that was a long time ago. <laughs> a very long time ago. There's my man right there. What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> what a lineup! I'm just I'm telling you, I was just sitting here looking over the, some of the names that are going to be there. Uh, I, I think if I wasn't part of the part of the the, uh, the Legend Mania, I'd probably buy a ticket and go myself to see some of these guys. We're going to have the honor of being able to do some interviews, and actually, a uh, I, I was asked earlier this week in a complete left swerve, and this is one thing I'm stuttering about. Um, I was actually asked to be the MC for the event on Saturday, and I am. This is to me, it's a tremendous honor, and I'm just I'm looking forward to being able to uh, hang out, meet, and of course, MC the event. Uh, of course, getting back to the subject at hand, you know, a lot of people, may, um, their memories of uh, Percy Pringle go back to, the, I would want to say, the mid late 80s with World Class Championship Wrestling, but you were into it a little bit before that, right? Yeah, I started the business in uh, 1974. So that's been quite a while ago, and I became Percy Pringle in 1978, and uh, the years went slowly by. I spent six years in, in, in Dallas with World Class Championship Wrestling, like you mentioned, with the Von Eric family there, and I was I was in Florida, back in Championship Wrestling from Florida days, mm -hmm. uh, back in the day. And then, of course, I signed my first contract with WWE in December of 1990 and started on the road with The Undertaker in uh, 1991. And was under contract with them until 2005, but I'm still under a contract with them. I'm under what they call a legends contract right now. Right. Uh, I, I still do things with with the uh, with them, you know, some kind of, some things like this. And I'm still doing. Uh, I've I recently just done a new video game that's going to be coming out in the fall. It's a Raw versus SmackDown video game. I will be buying uh, it. So I'm always doing something as far as wrestling is concerned, and uh, I guess I'll be doing that the rest of my life. That's what I love, and I just can't wait to come to Atlanta. I haven't been to Atlanta in probably like three three years at least. Uh, so I'm looking forward, and uh, I'm, I'm in Alabama too. Mm -hmm. I'm in Mobile. I'm down at the opposite end of you guys. I'm down on the coast in Mobile, so I'm looking forward to this a nice little drive up to Atlanta and to meet all the fans at Legends Mania, plus meeting all my uh, my friends, a lot of the wrestlers that I haven't seen in a long, long time. Now, that's good. for you, that's going to be 65 to 85 straight to the front door, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. He's Kate. Did we lose? No, you ain't listening. I'm here. Okay, no, I was hearing the system glitch out. It does that every once in a while. We're using the uh, five-letter internet chat program right now for our phone calls, and every once in a while it decides to make a fall from the uh, sky, if you know what I mean. But oh, I know what you mean. I had that problem with my cell phone. Yeah. Um, now, it's not just – now, let's just go ahead and say that there is also, with the Pringle name, another generation coming on board in the professional wrestling world and has over the last few years, right? Yeah, I have uh, my my youngest son. Uh, he's 23 now. Oh God, am I old? <laughs> yeah, he's, he's 23 now, and uh, he wrestles on the independent scene down here along the Gulf Coast. Uh, he goes as DJ Pringle. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, I, I have another son that's 30, and I'm really old when I start talking about him. Uh, he doesn't. He didn't catch the disease. <laughs> uh, this the younger son caught the disease. 
but uh, it's a wonderful disease to have, and, and I know that you're being. I know you guys understand what I'm talking about completely when I talk about that, because it's, it's like a disease. Once you get it, it's, it's hard to kick. You can't get rid of it. I understand completely because, if I may, from my perspective, I've had the honor of being in this industry, and I look at it like that. I first started training in 84 and got into it in 85, and I've been on and off ever since, and it's something you it, it, you really just don't get it out of your system. Um, whether it be, it's like in my world, I work on the independent circuit primarily, and I have a blast doing it. Now, let me go, let me go and ask a question because I know that you've made a few appearances in and around, especially the southern United States. Now... One of the things that I've always brought up about the independents as opposed to the national promotions or the ones that appear on national television is that there's always a different sense of intimacy when it comes to the factor of being able to interact with the fans. When you're working with the larger promotions, you really don't get that I, I you really don't get that po that possibility to, to get that to happen. I'm trying to find a word and it's just not working out. But on the end, on the indies, you actually do get a little bit more of that intimacy with the fans where you get a chance to get to know them a little bit better and they actually get a chance to follow your characters a little bit better, right? Uh, it's a matter of opinion. Uh, in the career that I had with The Undertaker, especially early on, we had a tremendous amount of fan interaction. Uh, especially I was blessed, you know, to be, you know, in the main events with The Undertaker. So uh, we were booked on meet and greets and stuff interacting with the fans all the time uh i don't know I'm, I'm not certain i don't know if they do that that much anymore as much as they used to but we used to get a you know we used to have as much as interaction with the fans of it as we wanted uh but the, but you do have to remember the travel schedule and, and the limited time that you have a lot of times there were times that we'd done two shows in one day mm -hmm. we do we do an afternoon matinee and then we have to be somewhere that night so some of the the, the scheduling you know prevented that that fan interaction uh, but you're right, of course, on the independent scene, uh, it's wide open uh, as, as far as, as having in, more interaction with the fans. Now, when you, were working, right. when you were working full fire with The Undertaker, were they still running an average of 300 shows per year on the schedule? Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Oh. Yeah, uh, gosh. <laughs> Those days were just, uh, it's unbelievable. sometimes I think back on that and wonder how we did it. I remember that there was a time there that, that uh, and, and it would be all over the country. It would, you know, nowadays it's pretty much a loop. They fly you into a central location and, and you do a loop. You know, right. just say, for example, fly you into say Nashville, and then you do Birmingham and by Atlanta, and you know, a little a little driving circuit there. But back in back, there was a time where we were just going back and forth all over the country, Chicago to L.A. to New York to Miami to boom, 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 boom. And I can remember a time where uh, an old timer taught me a lesson. He says, I, 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 I'd wake up in the morning and I'd know where I was. Because it was just a different time zone, a different city every day. He said, "Get you a piece of soap and write the name of the city on the mirror in the bathroom." And okay. I doing that. So when I get up in the morning to take my shower to go to the next city, I'd look up and I not remembered where I was. <laughs> and and believe, you might you might think that's crazy, but you, you wouldn't know where you were. You were just in a different town, a different time zone, and sometimes a different country every day. I understand that concept. I really do. Now, I mean, it's like, you know, coming back over to Legends Mania, because with you having been with World Class, of course, World Wrestling Federation, World Wrestling Entertainment, you know the hectic schedule, of course, on the uh, Texas circuit as well as the south, uh, the southwestern United States, just as well as the nationwide schedule. And of course, you've got some of the other people who are going to be appearing on there, such as Demolition. Um, I'm trying to remember the timelines as to whether or not y'all were working at the, um, in the same uh, on the same timeline with WWF, World Wrestling Federation at the time. You no, know, they were they were prior to us, uh, but uh, Barry Darso came back in as of some other characters after after we were already there. He came back. I think he was a Repo Man, mm -hmm. uh, and and maybe something else. I don't know. But I, all all these guys that are there, I know them all. I've had some kind of interaction with them at one point in time, you know, through the years. Especially my dear dear friend Jim Cornette. I can't wait to see Jim Cornette. I think we were cut out of the same mold, without a doubt. That's got to be very, very dangerous for that place. Uh, I've, got, I've got a bottle of water, and I will drink to that right now. Like, I'm going to open up. I'm going to open up the uh, microphones for members of the Ringside Roundtable. Mark Mabo Bowman, come on in. How you doing, uh, Mr. Pringle? Hey guys. Uh, well, just quick question. You know, everybody knows you as uh, Percy Pringle III, Paul Bear, one of probably the premier managers of the time. Um, I'd like to get your opinion on the state of pro wrestling as it is now, and why you. Uh, why do you think that managers aren't as prevalent as uh, they were in the past on the national level? Well, that's the, the answer to those are pretty cut and dry. The, the reason there aren't any managers is because they don't want to want they don't want any managers. If they want a manager, they have some, I guess. Uh, and if you really look at the at the timeline, I probably was the probably the last 
of the old school managers to work in, in World Wrestling Federation or World Wrestling Entertainment. Uh, and then that's when the, the girls came in. And when the girls came in, the fat, ugly men went out. And I was the fat, uh, last fat, ugly man that waddled out the door, I guess. <laughs> so they rather had the pretty young divas than the old school managers. And, and you know, it, we would have to re-educate all the, the fan base to, to the old school manager if they ever wanted to start doing that again. Uh, and I wouldn't ever say never. I, I would say, you know, in time, things, you know, things might change, and maybe they'll have some other men come in because they, they tried some uh, other managers, and they just didn't work. But uh, be that as it may, this is 2010. You know, there's a lot of changes that have gone down through the years. And uh, as far as the state of the business today, I don't know if you're talking about the state of the independence or the state of the big feds. I don't, I don't know what, what, you're, what you're referring to. Uh, just, I, have, I have, you know, there's certainly two different things. Um, I would definitely say the the uh, nationals, the WWE, TNA. Yeah, well, uh, I understand that, you know, they're going to start going head-to-head again on Monday night. And uh, we shall see what happens there. I, you know, I don't have too much to say about that because it hasn't happened yet. Uh, competition, is, of course, is good for everybody. It Amen. Make, it, it will certainly make each company step up their game without a doubt. So uh, competition is good. And... Uh, I guess we'll find out starting tomorrow night, I guess. like to welcome in Mr. MCO Chase Pearson. i got to say that I'm a big fan of the Attitude Era. I come on with the uh, return of Stone Cold and also uh, with The Undertaker and everybody. And i got to say, as Paul Barry, you're one of my favorite characters as a manager and just on the show in general. You really brought a, a sense of fun to the show, and I just would like to say it's an honor to speak with you. But I'd also like to say, you know, ask you what it was like to work on such a you know major schedule with some of the biggest superstars in wrestling? It, I have uh, no other word except for me. It was certainly a blessing. You know, I'm, from, I'm an Alabama boy, probably just like you guys. You guys are up in Birmingham, right? Right. Yes, sir. Are you all from Alabama? Yes. Well, roll tide, right? right. Amen. amen. Uh, everybody say amen, or I hear a war eagles. And no, we got an amen all the way across. Okay, all right. Okay, we're all friends now. Right. Yeah, I'm just an Alabama boy, just like you guys, man. I fell in love with wrestling when I was in high school down here on the Gulf Coast. Uh, I was very familiar with the wrestling in Birmingham during that time, too, because mm-hmm. being such a big wrestling fan that I was, sometimes I would, of course, it was two different territories. The Mobile Territory was certainly a different territory than, than Birmingham was in those days. And uh, every now and then, uh, I would go up to Birmingham to about Watertory and see some of the matches up, in, up there in those days. But I grew up down here on the Gulf Coast with Gulf Coast wrestling, and uh, it just—I'm just a Southern Alabama boy, just like you guys. Uh, I knew nothing about Madison Square Gardens or the Cow Palace in San Francisco or, or you know, Chicago, what went on all those places, uh, until I discovered the wrestling magazines, and I made sure I went out every month to the newsstand and got my, all my after mags. So then I started learning what was going on all around the world. So I'm just a young, you know, not young anymore. I was just a young kid from Alabama that wanted to be getting in the wrestling business. And my chances were slim and none. So I was just very, very blessed the way things happened. Uh, very similar to Jim Cornette, I started out hanging around, you know, at the back door of the wrestling matches, helping out, put up, putting up the rings. And I started as a ringside photographer, taking pictures uh, for the wrestling office down here. And then they would start using my pictures in the local newspaper and starting to get to know the wrestlers and just kind of snake my way in the door. Uh, the next thing I know, I was, you know, taking some wrestling lessons, and, and then somebody said, you need to try out being a manager, and I tried being a manager, and hell, here we are 40 years later. <laughs> so that's pretty much the Reader's Digest thing, you know. Right. So I, I, I came from hometown country boy in Alabama roots, and I've been blessed to travel all around the world. I've per- performed in uh, 30 countries and every, every state in the United States, and front of 80-something thousand folks in Wembley Arena in, in London, England. I can't, um, I can't. Really a blessing. Really a blessing. Really a blessing. And then uh, this past Friday night, I performed in front of 50 people in Bayou Little Battery, Alabama. So what a what a diverse uh, situation, huh? <laughs> that is definitely the case. I just, I can't imagine working in front of 80,000 people at, at Wembley Stadium. That must have been just an incredible experience. Oh, it was. I just, uh, it was. I, when I walked out through the curtain, I looked and just kind of took my breath away. I go, what am I doing here? <laughs> I'm sure you did. <laughs> what am I doing here? But it's uh, it's sort of been a blessing. I'm just, you know, I was just blessed to live my dreams, the dreams that you know that I had. That anybody that wants to get in this business have. You guys too, working on the independent level, and 
a lot of people, you know, listening to the show know exactly what I'm talking about. You have, you have these dreams, and unfortunately, there's only a certain amount of spots available. And I was just very, very blessed to to have a few of those spots, and uh, and I know it, and I treasure this business. Uh, I still protect this business, and I'll take it to my grave. Now, let me go ahead and ask if I could. You're making the reference to uh, Viola Battery. That would be uh, Sports Entertainment Wrestling at the uh, Viola Battery Community Center, right? Yeah, the little indie show Friday night. Yeah, uh, my, my my son was on it, and and I managed him. And uh, this was a small independent show, you know, out in the country. And uh, that's that's the roots of the business, without a doubt. Yeah, a matter of fact, if I remember, um, I've got my notes in front of me from uh, last night's show that the uh, one of the, uh, the co-main event that was Ro- uh, Robert Gibson from the Rock and Roll Express versus DJ Pringle, and you managed DJ, right? Yeah, yeah, and I mean, there's such a history there. Robert Gibson, who who is going to be at Legends Venue, by the way, right? With Ricky Morton, we go way way back. I've known I've known uh, Robert since he probably was about twelve, thirteen years old. Uh, his older brother was Ricky Gibson, right? He was a professional wrestler down, you know. A lot of people know him from the southeast area. He sure certainly wrestled in Birmingham during his day. Right. But he was there from Pensacola, which is just right down the road from Mobile. So we grew up in the same territory. And uh, so me and Robert go way, way, way back. And uh, it was just it was just a lot of fun to be out there in my son's corner with him, you know, wrestling Robert Gibson. We had a good time, really did. Now, actually, I remember um, being from Birmingham. I remember quite often the uh, situations between Robert Gibson for the United States Heavyweight Champ. Uh, excuse me, United States Junior Title down here, as well as uh, Rick Gibson when Ricky and Ro- um, when Rick and Robert were both teaming up for the Southeastern Tag Team Championships um, here in Birmingham, Alabama, and all for the uh, I think it was Buddy Fuller's Southeastern Championship Wrestling. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The Fullers had had, and then they, it was count. And then they went to they called it Continental Wrestling, right. and uh, but uh, yeah, it's. That's the way it was. Now, let me ask, if I may, there's two questions I always like to ask everybody who comes on the show. And there are always two defining moments for somebody in our industry. It's one, the first one is when you become a fan of the business itself. And the second part of the question is the defining moment where you knew that you wanted to or had to get into this business. Which one would those be for Percy Pringle? Well, my first, my earliest memories I have of professional wrestling, uh, by you know, gosh, been been from this area and, and it's, you know, see, it's country music, NASCAR, and wrestling, right? You, usually, everybody <laughs> yeah. loves all three, or at least two out of the three. Three but out I of three. Can, I can remember my earliest memories. I was, I think, I was about four or five years old, and I remember my parents taking me to wrestling. Back in those days, were usually live done live at the TV studio, and they took me down to the local TV studio to see wrestling live on the local uh, uh, channel here. And I have vivid memories of going to those matches when I was five years old. And then after that, you know, I don't remember wrestling too much until I, until I got in high school. Until I was about, you know, eighth, ninth grade. And then I discovered wrestling again, and that was it. Uh, you know, my, all my friends loved it, and that's where we went, that's where we hung out. And once I got my driver's license, uh, that's when I started making my trips up to Birmingham to see, you know, mobile wrestling wasn't, wasn't enough for me. So I would drive up to Birmingham and see the Birmingham matches, and then over to New Orleans. New Orleans is about 120 miles to our west, and I would drive over to New Orleans and see the New Orleans wrestling. Okay. But uh, that's when I really, really fell in love with it, and, and and I knew then that's what I wanted to do. But also, I always wanted to be an undertaker. I always wanted to be in the funeral business. And you were. So from, so from the time that I was, you know, in... Uh, in grammar school and, and, and getting into high school, I wanted it to be two things. I wanted to be in the wrestling business, and I wanted to be in the funeral business. And I have done both. I, I, have, I have a degree in mortuary science. I'm a licensed funeral director and bomber, and have been since uh, 1981. I still maintain my licenses, and I still uh, work in the funeral, funeral business and death care. And so and then McMahon took the two and made the Paul Bear Undertaker gimmick. <laughs> Which so, I love I mean, so much. My God, what can I say? <laughs> you got to live out both dreams at one shot. Exactly. And here I am. I'm 55 years old now, and I'm still doing it. And uh, like I say, this I'll do it forever. I love it. I, I'm sure you guys can tell this by talking to me on the telephone how much I enjoy it. And Actually, yes. How much I'm looking forward to this Legends Mania. Uh situation. It's really going to be a lot of fun for me. I can't wait. I wish I was on the way to Atlanta right now. Well, I gotta say that uh, if I came into the funeral home and saw you, I'd probably be the next customer. That, well, you, you would be surprised how often that does happen. Because <laughs> like I said, just like I said a minute ago, you know, country music, NASCAR, and wrestling. Right. Uh, it, it, 
I, I run into that situation quite often where folks will come, you know, to the funeral home and they'll recognize me. And But it's always been a positive thing. Oh, uh, absolutely. It's never, absolutely. never turned into a negative thing. Uh, the families that I serve in, in funeral service, they recognize me, you know, of course, and they uh, we have a connection right away. Right. Uh, you know, they say they feel like they, they know me, and, and, and it's always been a positive thing. And I was telling somebody the other night, I had a family just recently, in the last couple of weeks, ask me, Oh, Paul, would you stand up by Mama's casket and let me take a picture of y'all? <laughs> oh, I'm definitely doing that's, that. That's true. That's an absolute true. I, you know, I would, of course I wouldn't do it. No, no, no. And I'll be glad to sign an autograph for you or something, but I'm not going to stand up by your mama. But she loves you in the other time. I said, I, I, that's great. I love it. I appreciate it. But I'm just not going to stand by your mother's casket and have a picture made. I said, there's just something not right about that. <laughs> and that's true. It's 100% true. Right, but see, that's something I would probably ask you to do. <laughs> I do it for you. Right. Oh, thank you. Pretty Actually, good. I'd ask you to stand beside. I'd ask you to stand beside mine. Um, right. There was a question. I, there was a question I really wanted to hit, and I just completely slept it right after we got on that part of the discussion. Oh Lord. Actually, there is one I want to hit you with. You make the reference to NASCAR, and that hap- um, I, I'm also a NASCAR fan. I want to ask a question. Did you catch the Cobalt Tools 500 today? Yeah, uh, a little bit of it. Okay. I, I just saw. I saw a little bit. I didn't see a lot of. I'm not a real, real big NASCAR fan. I, I, I you know, I do follow it a little bit, but uh, no, I just saw a little bit of it today. Okay, I didn't know if you managed to catch the part of the race where uh, the final part where uh, Carl Edwards and uh, Keselowski managed to get into it again. <laughs> no, I didn't see the finish of it. I saw the, the, about the middle, the middle part of it. Okay. Well, I'll bring that one up to you when I catch it um, next Friday and Saturday up in Atlanta, which will give me the perfect segue into March 12 and 13, the Sheridan Gateway Hotel. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest is going to be one of the featured guests at the Legends Mania Tag Team Convention. By the way, in case you missed it, already um, recently added include the Powers of Pain, the Barbarian, and the Warlord. One half of the Midnight Rockers, the excuse me, Marty Janetti, will be in Atlanta, Georgia. Percy Pringle, Paul Bearer, both of them are going to be in Atlanta, Georgia. Isn't that right, sir? Absolutely. You can't separate them. <laughs> I'm so good. We tried. We tried too many times. We just gave up. Well, let me hit you with this one real quick. I, I'm, I know it's hard to narrow it down, but out of all, all the guests, especially the ones that you have not had an opportunity to work with, like I, I don't know who you have and haven't worked with in different parts of the country, of course. Ivan and Nikita Koloff are going to be there. Um, Axe and Smash, uh, Barry Darso and Bill Eady are going to be there. Of course, uh, the Rock and Roll Express with Jim Cornette, they're going to be there. The Mi- Excuse me, the Midnight Express with Jim Cornette, the Rock and Roll Express. Are I got transposed for a second there. I'm just running. Thou shalt be shot, Eddie. I know, I shall be shot. Thank you, Chase. That'll be all. I mean, you've got so many people. Greg Gagne and Jim Brunzel are going to be there. Um, Tommy Rich, Thunderbolt Patterson, Luscious Johnny Valiant is going to be there. Uh, out of the ones that you have not worked with or haven't met yet, which ones Which ones are you most looking forward to meeting? Uh, I'm trying to, to think. I, I, I've met them all. Uh, okay. Of course, I know, them, I know them all. I've had limit, limited relationships with uh, Greg Gagne. Uh, because of course he was with it was with the AWA you know mm-hmm. up in the north back in the day, and uh, I spent most of my time you know in the NWA and down down south. In fact, I had I was, while I was work, working in, in Florida back in 1985, uh, they called me a couple of times to go up to AWA, but it, it was never meant to be. So uh, I don't know them very well at all. Uh, I know, of course I know Ivan. I've worked with Ivan. I've worked with Tito Santana, me and the Undertaker. Uh, Back in the day, and right? All the Armstrongs are going to be there, and that's yes, my buds are. there. Uh, all the Armstrongs from just right down the road in Pensacola. Exactly. I, was just, I, I see them quite often. Right I don't get to see uh, Brad very often because Brad lives in Atlanta. Okay. Uh, but I get to, I get to see Bullet Bob and, and Road Dog and uh, Scott uh, all the time. I haven't seen Thunderbolt Patterson in, in, in years, so I'm looking forward to seeing him. And of course, I haven't seen Tommy Rich in a while. I get to see him every once in a while, but. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm a big fan too. I mean, guy, I think anybody that's in the wrestling business is a fan of wrestling, and I, I'm, I'm seriously, I'm just excited about going and seeing, seeing this and, and meeting all the all my friends and, and and all the fans. Just excited as the people have already bought their tickets. I understand there's been a lot sold, and uh, there's still a lot more to go. And if you ain't got your ticket, you need to do go do so pretty quick. 
You can find the tickets, of course, available at legendsmania.com. They have the link to purchase tickets up there. I've had an opportunity on more than one occasion to speak with Tom Harriman, T.C. Clay, the two Toms, if you will, Tag Team Promotions. These guys have got it all laid out. This is going to be a phenomenal convention for our friends in and around the southeastern United States. I've got I'm, United States. States. Oh, no. I'm entitled to screw up every once every five words. Come on. I'm on the phone with a legend here. Come on. Give me a break. Oh, please. No, in my book, sir, in my books, you are. I've been. I was a huge fan of the of the character of Percy Pringle. I'm a huge fan of the character of Paul Bearer, and to, to have you on Beyond Ringside is just, you know, it's one of my dreams come true. And I appreciate you taking the time to come on board. Well, that's great. And, and you, you started out the, the conversation talking about Mr. Hughes and the urn and such. I will have the uh, the original urn with me. Yes. Uh, during that appearance, I'm I'm bringing it with me. Fact, I have it right here in my office. I'm looking at it right now. We are all getting and a I, picture. I'm with bringing you. the 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 original urn that I started out using with the Undertaker and the urn that that Hugh stole from the Undertaker, mm. and that I used for so many years. I'll have that with me, and the fans have an opportunity to uh, to have a picture made with it and hold it and uh, maybe rub it like a genie lamp, make a wish, maybe something <laughs> will pop out for us. Actually, the wish has already been granted. It's called Legends Mania. It's next weekend, 12th and 13th, because a lot of the people who are on this one, you're making a reference to uh, Tito Santana and Ivan Putzky. I mean, I've, I've met Tito, and I've worked with Tito on a couple of different shows. I've never met Mr. Putzky, of course. I've worked on shows with the Armstrong family for moons, everybody, Steve, Scott, Brad, Brian, and Bullet Bob. Um, and I'm looking for, I know that four out of the fives are, it will be in Atlanta next weekend, um, especially on the 13th. And I believe a couple of them are going to be in on the 12th as well. So, I mean, like I say, for, for fans of real professional wrestling, this is going to be a great opportunity to be able to meet, yeah. talk to, ask questions of, hang out with some of the true legends of our industry in tag I'm team. coming in. I'm going to be there on Friday night for the pre-show party. Uh, okay. The promoter, you know, I was I was going to be scheduled for the all day on the thirteenth, and uh, he, he was telling me about the pre-show party on, on the twelfth, and I and I said I want to come to that too, so I'm going to be there too at the at the hotel that evening, and uh, so here's a chance to uh, to come out and visit with us all. Cool. Well, sir, it has been an honor and a privilege. Thank you for taking the time to come on board with us. And believe me, we are genuinely looking to be able to meet you and hang out with you this coming weekend, March 12, thir- thir- March 12 and 13, the Sheridan Gateway Hotel in Atlanta, Georgia. It is going to be a phenomenal time by the fans, for the fans. You got it. Legends Mania, the convention. We're all coming. Fantastic. I'm looking forward to it. And y'all be sure you come up and introduce yourself to me and, and tell me who you are and everything. And uh, the fans, too, tell me that you heard me on Beyond Ringside. And uh, and we'll have a great time. I don't, no doubts about that. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Percy Pringle the third. Thank you for coming on. We thank you, sir. Y'all have a good evening. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.